Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kutsiki bringing another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday and happy 2026. Uh, if you're new to my channel, you know what to do. Rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. So today we're going to look at jobs uh, for 2026. I'm just going to look at jobs. I am not looking for work. I'm just looking at jobs for other people that are trying to get into help desk or IT support. Usually I make these videos. They are dedicated for people that are looking at jobs and they look at the job posting. Like, oh, what are they asking for? Why do they want this? What do I need to learn? What I, what I, what's important needed for the job? What questions I may be asking the job interview? So that's the reason why I make these types of videos. I do these videos every a couple of weeks, uh, just to look at the look at the jobs, look at the job market, look at the job postings, et cetera, et cetera. So let me share my screen, and we're gonna go over this real quick. Okay, so this video should not be that long. All right, so. I just put help desk because people were ask me like, if you want to apply for jobs, and I'm going to open up my notepad. So you have help desk, you have desktop support, you have IT support, you have service desk. Because people are asking me, what, sort of, what kind of jobs should I be applying for? And then there's help desk, uh, tier two. Then it gets very granular. Like some companies will look at service desk. Analysts, so I'm going to look at help desk. Analysts, so like it, it depends on every company. So like it's very important that when you look at job postings, um, you figure out, you figure out um, what jobs are you looking for, et cetera, et cetera, because. Every company is different. So I'm just going to close this out just to show you an idea, a rough idea of what you're looking for. So let's look at jobs. Let's let's look at jobs right now. So I put seven days. I put help desk on the top. I literally put no location because I want to see what, what comes up for me. So I put seven days ago. So this is like 300 jobs right now. And I put, when I changed it to like, I think a, a day ago or whatever, like it, it gives you the like 24 hours or three days. I think it was like 100 jobs or something like that. Yeah, it was 100 jobs. But Let's stick to seven days because the reason I say that is because I've seen people apply for jobs like seven days ago and they're getting job interviews. So, and I'm based in New York, but I'm not going to focus in New York. I want to go to a different state. So let's look at jobs somewhere else. New York is always like popular, but I want to go to a different, I want to go, let's go to New Jersey. Let's go to New Jersey. We'll go to Baltimore afterwards. So let's see what they're asking for. So got 401k, rental leave, paid rental leave. Uh, okay, remember I talked about Citrix VDI, like Citrix desktops, remember, Citrix desktops, uh, it depends what Citrix, they have Citrix workspace, so let's look at Citrix workspace real quick, so Citrix workspace, there's actual, let's see, there's actual training for this, I don't know if there's actual training for this, uh, there's some videos on Coursera, there's Citrix training in here, but I'm not sure if it's free or not, but anyway, so you would download Citrix Workspace. Uh, and keep in mind that there is like the Windows version of it, right? It's like Windows. And then there's a Linux version of it. Then there's the Mac version of it. So you have early versions right here. So sometimes what happens is sometimes some of the uh, Citrix Workspace versions are not compatible with the new operating system for Mac. Uh, so you may have to go like a uh, version back or maybe two versions back, depending on the Mac machine that they have. And that's the only way it would work. So issues you'll see with that is with Citrix Workspace would be um, when they try to remote into a desktop, it only takes one monitor and the user has three monitors. So you have to change the settings on that. That's just one example. Another example is someone has Citrix Workspace on their machine and they're trying to print from their local desktop on their on their local desktop to their virtual machine. And that doesn't work because it's restricted by your policies in your work environment. So they may, be, they may need to be added to a security group for that, for printer redirection, if that makes sense. Some companies allow it, some companies don't allow it. It's for like security reasons. Um, and then you'll have issues where uh, you have, their, they are, they're running Citrix on their, on their browser instead of their desktop. That does happen sometimes. So it doesn't detect the Citrix receiver on the browser like Chrome or Safari uh, or uh, Edge, I guess, if you're using Edge. And then 
you have to change the settings for it to open up on Citrix Workspace instead of the actual browser. So those are our common issues you'll encounter in a work environment is nothing out of the ordinary. So I gone over mailboxes before, you know how to troubleshoot mailboxes. So you're gonna have pe people like miss like people messaging you like, oh, can you give me access to Sally's uh calendar? So then you you would either you would either add add Sally's whole inbox to your calendar or to your inbox. Sorry, you add Sally's whole inbox to your uh, inbox, or you would message Sally directly on on Teams chat or Slack chat. And you're like, can I get on your machine for a second? It looks like. Sally, it looks like um, Mary's asking for access to your calendar. Is that okay with you? Yeah, yeah. And then you would go to her, Sally's account, right-click on her calendar, and then give that person access to, you know, to that specific calendar. Like, so you have, you have um, what we call, um, and I'm just going to, give me a second. I, I have it open somewhere else. So I'm trying to open it. So you yeah, have what's called delegation access. So I could give someone delegation access to my to my mailbox, to my calendar, or to my contacts. It's very granular. So if I go here, let's just pick someone hypothetical, right? Hypothetically, pick someone from here. Um, hit OK. And then when you add that person, you could give them editor rights to your calendar, author rights, reviewer rights. And then what happens is they get copies of it. Delegate they, they, they gets copies of it. You could give them access to your whole inbox. You give them access to your contacts. You give them access to your notes. And then you hit OK. And then you hit OK. And then you're done. So there is one way of doing it. You get into someone's machine, and then you give them delegation access. The other way of doing it would be you right-click on the person's calendar. So I'm... I would go to the person's calendar and then I would add the person to my calendar and hit okay. And then do I want to give them view de details? I want to give them edit details. I want to give them delegation details. Do I want to give them view titles and locations only on my calendar? Like what do I, what access do I want to give them? So then that gets also granular as well, but you could, you could give them access to your calendar if you like. There's more than one way of doing it. There's several ways of doing it. So and you have other ways of doing it as well, but I'm not. I'm not. That's that's not the point of this video. I'm trying to show you like how it's done, right? So, just close out my calendar. So you, you're gonna have people asking you how to do things like that, you know. So that's very important. And then you have obviously troubleshoot Word, Excel, PowerPoint. I gotten over this before. You do run as or run, and then you do Outlook that safe mode, and this, that allows you to open up Outlook in safe mode. And you could run it in safe mode, which means the add-ons or the plugins are no longer running except for the necessary components of Outlook, and that's it. So that's that's another way of doing it to troubleshoot Outlook Word Excel. Sometimes they don't open because the plugin is corrupted. So you may have to go and repair the plugin. An example of that would be like the Zoom plugin that I have on my Outlook. And then you would go to uninstall programs, and then Zoom should be here, and then you could run a repair on Zoom. And then hit OK, and then repair it, et cetera, et cetera. And then that's it. I'm not gonna do that right now, but that's 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 some of the, the examples right there. And then you have your bring your own device mobile technology. So bring your own mobile device. And you have group policy. You could you could, if you have a server, you could play around group policy. And you have spam filtering platforms such as Proofpoint. So you use for Proofpoint to look at emails that may have been missing. Maybe they're blacklisted. Maybe they're whitelisted. We don't know. So that that's. That's pretty much it with this job posting, what they're asking for. 75K is pretty good. It's hybrid, so that's not bad. Um, and that's it. And then they have offices in other places like in New York as well. So let's look at the next job. I don't want to look at too many jobs today, but I just want to just give you a rough idea of what you should be looking at and what jobs you should be applying for and what they're asking for. So this job is definitely not what I'm looking for. So we're going to go to a different job based in California for ship. Uh, let's see what they're asking. Twenty nine dollars to forty three dollars, and that's not bad. Okay, so help desk ticket. So I gone over this before. So if you do service now developer program, uh, and you could get service now for free. 
Um, and then you could deal with tickets and troubleshoot tickets, et cetera, et cetera. And you could actually deal with that stuff. So what else do they have here? So obviously you have to have good customer service with phone computers, et cetera. Um, experience of onboarding people. So like you'll have a new hire, right? And I'm going to show you something real quick. So some companies have a template for new hires. Like I, I have one. I print, I have one printed out. So it says name, email, uh, title. Uh, it says location, like where they're where actually they're sitting at. Um, it has their DLs, distribution groups that they should be added to. Then you have security groups that should be added to. Uh, share drives. Um programs that they should have access to. Um, and then setting up new hires as well. I'm thinking about it in my head. And then you'll ask like Mira, Mira who question marks. Who who do who do you want them to mirror that has already the same access that this person has access to? And then once that's all done, said and done, and then you have a checklist. So like setting up new hire hardware is one. Setting up email, email name, domain, etc. Setting up, setting up um, mobile phone, email, setting up programs, setting up um, welcome email, uh, showing them how to get programs themselves. Uh, approval process, uh, cybersecurity training, uh, HR training, um, welcome training, and then you have all these other, just have all this other stuff, right? So it's very involved, but it's just, just giving you a hypothetical. So it's part of the onboarding process, right? So now you have some information on that. Then you have your hardware support, repair support, software support, and then you, you have your customer service, et cetera, et cetera. And then that's it. You're asking for two years of technical experience. Anyone, I feel like anyone could do this job. It's nothing out of the ordinary. Oh, you need a security clearance. Must require to obtain security clearance. But you could, look, look, you have VoIP phones. You could do this. You guys could do this. Office 365, Office Active Directory. They require A+. Plus. Experience of onboarding. I just showed you the onboarding process, like some of it. So, yeah. So, let's go look at another, another job. Let's see. Hybrid work. 6575K, that is not bad at all. So you have to know how to configure, deploy, and manage Windows through Microsoft into an endpoint. I'm actually going to work on something on this, so don't worry about that. Uh, patch management, security enforcement, Intune policy configurations, device enrollment pro profiles, et cetera, et cetera. Three to five years of IT support experience. You need some Intune experience, Endpoint Manager. Uh, Windows 10, Windows 11, Active Directory, Azure, Act Azure Active Directory experience. Experience supporting Microsoft 365, et cetera, A plus certification and Microsoft certifications. Uh, and then familiar with ITIL practices, service ma service management tools. So if you if you do ITIL best practices, I am 99% sure that there is an article on this somewhere, right? Yeah, exactly. So you have like practices and ITIL and how does that work, right? I'm not gonna make a video on this, but I've done training on this before, not on not on YouTube for actual companies outside of my YouTube channel. I've done this for like actual help desk people, but I'm not gonna do it here. But you should understand best practices and how tickets are handled and how they're managed and why and why help desk managers or IT managers or directors or CISOs or CTOs. Stress the living hell out of tickets and stress the living hell out of metrics because those things are very important. All right. So let's look at one more job. Let's look at IT support, 40,000, 50,000. So you must have experience in the IT industry, you must pass a background check, background check, must be able daily drive. So you have to drive to job sites. Uh, experience with VPN, firewalls, network security protocols, asset communication skills, et cetera, et cetera. So let's look at one more job. I, I, that one was too short. Um, yeah, the noise. Yeah. All right. Um, don't have a bachelor's degree. I have a plus, not security plus. Uh, then you're asking for experience with Mac OS X, Windows, Office 365, Adobe, G Suite, 
what I used to do, like for guys that are like watching this video, like let's just say Adobe, right? What I would do is I would go here and type Adobe Creative Cloud Customer Service. And then I would I would literally just call the number or I would call the number or I would contact support for the product. Cause you know, the, the Adobe is a pain in the butt. I'm letting you know right now. It's not an easy thing to deal with. So, and this is view trouble, unable to access, blah, blah, blah. It gives you a bunch of articles on how to troubleshoot it. Eventually, though, you will, you need a contact support because it's literally a pain in the butt, right? So, You will just contact support. I, I, I would. I'm not. I'm not gonna talk about this because it'll, it'll make. It's gonna be a super long video. But you should be able to contact support. That's very important, right? Those things are super duper important. Um, and you should be good to go after that. So I, I usually contact the vendor if I can't find if I can't find the solution online. I just call them directly. That's just me. Um, what else? It's a brand new job. Look at that. Twenty dollars an hour. Help us, my time to shine. Okay, uh, this is a little weird, but sure, why not? Um, friction Windows and Mac. I guess Windows ten and eleven, probably maybe still maybe eleven now at this point. Basic networking, IP addressing, DCP, DNS, DHCP, understanding how IP addresses, how things talk to each other, and things like that. That makes sense. Um, and that's it. So, okay, this is. I don't know. This job's a little. Like, I don't know, it's just, for me, it's, like, very, like, hyped up. Like, the job position is very hyped up, but hopefully it's a it's a good company to work for, so I have no idea. But I'm going to do some reviews on that. Um, Yeah, I'll stop sharing. I think that that's enough for today. I don't want to go too crazy with this. I'll stop sharing. So, yeah, that's all the jobs for today. I, I just talked about Creative Cloud, new hire onboarding process, troubleshooting Citrix. Things like that, showing you about uh, Office 365 experience. Like, there's a lot to learn, but you definitely can learn it if you put your mind to it and your time for it, and that's it. That's all you have to do is just put your mind and time for it and learn those skills, and, and you should be good to go, and you can start applying for those jobs. And then you can make yourself stand out by talking about the stuff that you just learned. As you learn about it, create your labs and learn about it, you could put bring that up during the actual job into you. Like, I saw you're asking about this. I actually am familiar with that. I know how to do that. This is how you would do it. Blah, 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 blah. So it makes you stand out. Hopefully this video helps you out. Hope you have a wonderful 2026 uh, new year. Let's, let's go. Let's do it. Let's see how it goes. Let's win together. I'll see you guys later. Bye.